Jared here. Today we're talking about a check engine light on a 2.0 liter TFSI uh, turbocharged Audi engine. This particular uh, check engine light is going to be on an Audi Q5. This is a 2011. This is a P2188. Come over here and I'll show you the uh, code reader here. We've got the code reader in here and it says System 2 Rich at Idle P2188. So we're going to show you what that's going to be. About 95% of the time, in my experience, on a, this particular trouble code, you're going to find that this high pressure fuel pump is actually leaking oil. I'm sorry, leaking fuel into the oil. What happens is this is a direct injected engine. That's why it's called TFSI. Uh, it, it takes the fuel pressure from about 40 PSI in the fuel, fuel tank and it uh, bumps it up to about 2,000 PSI on this high pressure fuel pump and uh, it uh, direct injects it in all four cylinders like a diesel engine would. What happens is the seal at the end of this primer pump can slowly fail and uh, when you shut your car off and it heat soaks it can slowly drip a little bit of fuel and saturate your oil just enough to where it'll set a rich fault at idle. So what happens is your, your oil is just a slightly bit diluted with fuel. So it, when we replace this high pressure fuel pump, we also need to do oil change. So I'm gonna go ahead and bust this repair out real quick right in front of you. What I did is I went ahead and got the engine up to operating temperature so I can do an oil change on it. And uh, it would be best if I could let it cool down, but uh, sometimes as a flat rate tech, you just gotta do the work quick. We're going to pull the engine cover off. This right here is the high pressure fuel pump. Uh, this is where the fuel is delivered into the high pressure fuel pump. This right here is uh, the exhaust camshaft and there's a lobe on the back of it that actually uh, pushes this, this high pressure fuel pump in and out uh, to, to raise it to 2000 PSI. So when we take these, there's two different bolts on either side of it. We have to take out the high pressure fitting on the bottom we have to take out the low pressure hose on the top, uh, on, the, on the side here. Um, this electrical connector just unplugs here. And then as we take out these bolts right here, like I said, it's, it's uh, in there in spring pressure. So we got to go back and forth. I have a few tools laid out right here. These are the tools I'll be using. I have a uh, oil filter for the oil change. This is to pull the high pressure fuel pump out. This is for the uh, banjo bolt at the bottom for the high pressure fitting. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna move the uh, fuel pressure or the low fuel pressure hose to the side. Now we have, this is your EVAP line right here that goes to your EVAP purge valve. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this step, but if you pull this out of the way, you can get some extra clearance. What we're gonna do is separate the out right there, and then we can push that out of the way right there. Now we're gonna take is fitting down below the pump loose. Fitting below loose. Now we're gonna start with the bottom bolt on the pump. taking it out you can go ahead and just take one out and then take the other one all the way out uh, I'm gonna do it that way definitely for speed when you're putting it in you have to go side to side for sure but if, as you notice as I'm taking it out it's not even pushing itself out but if I give it a little bit of persuasion it's gonna come just real easily See, it popped right out there so where it's gonna leak 
is right in here. There's a seal right in here in that plunger and that's where, that's where they typically leak. Here's the new pump. We're gonna go ahead and throw it in. For demonstration purposes, I'm gonna show you there's, there's a plunger right here. It's got a keyway on it. It's got a roller on it and that's what rolls on your camshaft. Now I need to locate it back in. Okay, the keyway's on the top. There it goes. Be careful with the O-ring. Sometimes it's a good idea to put a little bit of grease on the O-ring. I'm gonna be careful with it. We'll start by just taking the extension and the socket and going by hand on the top one. You can go ahead and screw it in until it's flush. And then we're gonna go the bottom one. You're gonna feel it. You're gonna use your hand as a guide and you're gonna feel it where it needs to go. And then it doesn't hurt to kind of move the pump around a little bit. All right, now that they're both flush, now we're gonna start going side to side just a little bit. Maybe like three, four turns this side, three, four turns that side. And we're just gonna walk it in until it's flush. This way you don't cut the O-ring and everything goes in there the way it's supposed to. Now this uh, bottom pressure fitting can be difficult to put in there. There is a uh, trick. You can take this, uh, let's take this hose out of the way to show you. There's a T30 right here. You can take this out of the intake manifold. And then you can have, then you can move this pipe around just a little bit, but this is going to be extremely tricky. Sometimes, sometimes they're been out of shape and I can already tell that this one's been out of shape. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to persuade, persuade this one a little bit with a wrench. It's a little bit closer initially now. Let's see how close we are. Still a little bit too far. underneath it now that just comes with time you're not necessarily going to be able to do what I just did right there just throwing a wrench in there and bending it that wasn't even the right tool to bend it but I just kind of had an eye for it and I saw where it needed to go but sometimes that fitting right there, you can fight. I've seen guys fight it for hours. So if it's going on there crooked and you think you started it and then you start jamming it on there sideways with a wrench, you did it wrong. You're gonna cross thread it and then you destroyed the whole thing and you gotta start over, the fitting's destroyed. It has to start screwing on there easily by hand and you need to just be able to roll it on. All right, now we're gonna start going back together with it. We got the pump completely installed. The bottom fitting was the hard part. Now everything else is easy. So we're gonna put this fitting back into place. This is the uh, high pressure fuel line. We're gonna put both of our uh, hose clamps back 
back on this one over here on the EVAP purge line. And then definitely don't forget this one on the high pressure fuel line. And it sometimes it's a good idea to replace this with a screw clamp, but if you uh, squeeze them correctly and put them on and take them off correctly, they will maintain their rigidity. What I like to do after I put them on is just give them a little bit of tap like that and then that makes sure they're nice and secure. That one actually is a little bit too far back for my liking. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, everything's good here. That repair is done. Now we're gonna move to the oil change. For the oil change, we're gonna suck it out from the top like we do it at the dealership. We've got a service plug right here and we've got a top loaded oil filter. Before I forget, this is why I put this is why I put the screws and stuff right in front of me so I don't forget stuff. This is something I could have easily forgot if I put it on the ground or something. I'm gonna put this screw back in the intake manifold to secure this hose back. All right, now back to the oil change. Oil filter. It's got a uh, check valve in it, so it's not gonna spill, but it's still gonna drip a little bit, so get a rag out. It's a good idea to take the oil filter out before you start sucking the oil out, because the oil in um, the oil filter housing is gonna start rolling down. Now we've got this Harbor Freight oil extractor. It's just an oil pump. We're gonna, I've used it multiple times so far and it works absolutely fabulous, fabulously. We're gonna put it in this service hole right here. I'm gonna, right there is the, about right there is the bottom, I can feel it. And then it starts curving down the bottom of the oil pan. So it's completely empty right now. And, uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see anything with the camera on this, but it actually sucks the oil out pretty efficiently. Yeah, you might not be able to see it, but uh, Whenever it gets extracted, we'll show you at the end here. Actually, uh, I think we're going to go ahead and end the video right here and uh, to keep the video short so I can upload it. Uh, I'll do an oil change video in the future. I appreciate it.